Good morning, students. Today I am going to discuss about mechanism of HCl secretion. And you can see here, I have drawn an oxyntic gland, one of the glands in the stomach. And this is the parietal cell. And I hope you know, parietal cells are the one which secretes HCl as well as intrinsic factor. And this is chief cell, chief cell. Chief cell secret pepsinogen. So I am going to discuss how this parietal cell is going to secrete HCl here. So this is gastric rumen. So just concentrate on the diagram. This is the parietal cell which is going to secrete the hydrochloric acid HCl into the gastric lumen. So this is the GIT lumen. So this is the apical border of parietal cell. This we call as vasolateral. And you can see here, here there is the blood vessel. So this is the structure of the parietal cell. You can see the folds. We are going to see how HCl is being secreted from parietal cell. So what happens? Yeah, carbon dioxide will be coming from the blood vessel into the parietal cell and carbon dioxide combines with water to form carbonic acid maybe carbonic acid so listen here carbonic acid is formed in the parietal cell that is the first step so carbon dioxide is coming from the blood vessel and enters into the parietal cell so carbon dioxide combines with water to form carbonic acid and what H2CO3 is happening is it is divided into H plus and bicarbonate and I hope this H plus has to come to the gastric lumen but this H plus so listen here H plus is a product of carbonic acid how carbonic acid is formed by combination of carbon dioxide with water carbon dioxide is coming from the blood vessel so we have now got H plus but this H plus as such cannot enter into the gastric lumen so for that a pump is required so this is a pump which sends H plus outside and K plus inside so this is called H plus K plus ATPS or proton pump so just understand this is a type of you can pause the video and try to answer what is this type of transport I will give the option primary active transport secondary active transport simple diffusion facilitated diffusion so see here this one so let's say the H plus is going outside and K plus is coming inside with the help of the enzyme H plus K plus ATPS I hope you know the answer once ATPS comes yes it is a type of active transport especially primary active transport so only if this pump is present this H plus will be going outside so you need carbon dioxide entering inside and I need this pump H plus K plus ATPS so I hope under some source this H plus is going like this nothing yeah, now I got H plus and this bicarbonate will be coming to the basolateral this is basolateral membrane this bicarbonate is coming via the basolateral membrane and it may enter into the blood vessel and remember, and remember there is another transport occurring here when one bicarbonate comes there is one chloride exchanged very very important so whenever one bicarbonate is coming in via the basolateral membrane there is one chloride coming into the parietal cell so now we got how so now we got how chloride comes into the parietal cell for every one bicarbonate one chloride is coming in so what happens and there is a chloride channel also so this is chloride channel and this chloride comes along and comes as chloride so i got cl i got h plus so h plus is formed from this equation and chloride is from the same equation bicarbonate which is formed is going out and this arm of this we call it as alkaline tide. Alkaline bicarbonate is alkaline. So for every HCl being secreted into the lumen, there is one bicarbonate entering into the gasolateral membrane into the blood vessel. And that bicarbonate entry is called as alkaline tide. And for this bicarbonate entry, it has to be exchanged with chloride. You can see here. For every one bicarbonate coming outside into the blood vessel, there is a chloride entering into the parietal cell. This is the structure of parietal cell. And this chloride is coming via chloride leaky channel or chloride channel. Yeah, now there is some twist. You can see the potassium which is entering inside. And remember, I can draw here for understanding. Now there is a confusion why potassium is coming out. This is potassium leaky channel. So this also we have to explain. But now I am going to explain about mechanism of HCl secretion from parietal cell. So you can see the potassium is coming outside. And what happens to that potassium? 
Yeah, that is recycled. So yeah, this potassium is coming in with exchange of X plus. That potassium is again coming out via potassium leak. It is like a circulation, recirculation. So from where this potassium is coming? From this one. This potassium, or can put like this. Yeah. So this is H plus coming out, and this is potassium recycling. Okay. So obviously this potassium is from this potassium. And now the potassium is coming inside from this potassium. What is the source for this potassium? This that is what my question. Can I not tell how this potassium is from where the source potassium? You can pass the evidence try to answer. I, otherwise, what I want to mean is if something is not there in that cell, this potassium circulation may not happen, or the potassium source will not be there. What is that? Which is present? I will give one more clue. Which is present in each and every cell. I usually tell in all classes. This is present in each and every cell. So you can pause the video and try to answer what is the transport. Yeah, right. So there is sodium, potassium ATP. So sodium, three sodium will go out, and two potassium will come in, and this is called sodium potassium ATPs, which is present usually in every cell. I am drawing the sodium potassium ATPs of parietal cell, and this is an example of. Primary active transport. The transport is against the concentration gradient, and you can see here the potassium is coming in, and this is the potassium. So now I know the source of potassium. So the potassium is coming from sodium potassium ATPase pump, and that potassium is going via potassium leakage channels, and that potassium is allowed to enter into the parietal cell only if H plus K plus ATPase is there. So this is the cycle of potassium regarding that cell secretion. I again repeat, I hope I don't confuse sodium potassium ATPase. Because of that, two potassium is coming in. And this two potassium is going outside via the leaky channels. So I know the source of this potassium. And what happens to this potassium which is coming out? It is again entering only when H plus K plus ATPase is there. That is very important. For example, if I am blocking this. Yeah. If I block this H plus K plus ATPS, this H plus coming out and K plus going in cannot occur. That's why pan forty commonly we use for ulcer problem. That is, if you are having gastritis or gastric ulcer, what is the one of the main causes? Excess HCl secretion or excess acid secretion. So to prevent that, there are some drugs like pantoprazole, omeprazole, esomeprazole, all those things. What they do is. They are called X plus K plus ATPase inhibitors. So I am inhibiting this, or proton pump inhibitor. So what happens when I block this? X plus cannot come out, potassium cannot come out. So when there is no X plus going out, this is also blocked. So HCl is not going to come out into the gastric lumen. And remember the word alkaline type. So for every one bicarbonate coming outside, one chloride is exchanged. So here there is bicarbonate chloride exchange. And this is the structure of the parietal cell. So I just quickly summarize. Carbon dioxide is the main source which combines with water to form carbonic acid under the help of the enzyme carbonic anhydrase. And H2CO3 is divided into H plus and bicarbonate. And H plus is going into the gastric lumen, not as such. It requires a H plus K plus ATPase. Only if H plus K plus ATPase pump is present, this H plus will go out. And H plus, when it goes out, one potassium has to come in. And I explained about the source of potassium. See here. Yeah, because of sodium potassium ATPs, two potassium is coming in, and that two potassium is going out via potassium leaky channels, and that potassium is again coming back with the help of this H plus K plus ATPs. So for H plus going out and potassium coming in, you require this H plus K plus ATPs. That's why these drugs, pantoprazole, all prazoles. Pantoprazole, lansoprazole, omeprazole, all those things will block this H plus K plus ATPase. So we got H plus, and as bicarbonate goes out, one chloride comes in. This is exchange, and this chloride as such comes along, and there is one more channel called a chloride channel. So even if there is problem in chloride channel, chloride may not be able to come out. Then also the mechanism of excess secretion will be affected. So I hope it is very clear for you. So in today's video, we discussed about how. That cell is secreted into the gastric lumen from the parietal cell. In next video, we will meet with a different topic. Thank you.